Good morning, this is the Plug Seeker. Welcome to another episode. So in today's episode, we're going to see a video I filmed at the end of last year, which was my first proper road trip in my new Nissan Leaf e-Tecna. This was a 440 mile trip, which was about 700 kilometers. As you will see in the video, it didn't go quite according to plan. So sit back, get comfortable, and let's see how I got on. Now, today I'm going to be doing a road trip. I'm going to be driving up from Surrey up to Edinburgh. And here's the uh, trip here, which I've planned on PlugShare. Um, I'll be looking to stop twice, or at least that's the plan. The trip today will be about 445 miles or just over 700 kilometers. Now, the last time I drove up to Scotland was in February 2019. And if you're interested in seeing me do that trip, uh, please do check out this video. The last time I did a Scotland trip was in my 30 kilowatt Nissan Leaf Ascenta. Uh, and as you can see, if you watch the video, uh, it took me six stops on the way up and five stops on the way back. Um, now today I'll be doing that in my newer Nissan Leaf E-Tecna, which is a 62 kilowatt hour. And uh, I'll be looking at doing that probably in about two stops. Now, my experience of driving this particular EV um, gives me roughly a motorway range of somewhere around 180 miles. Um, so I'll be arranging to stop somewhere around 150 mile mark. Um, the first stop I'll be stopping at will be this one, which is an Osprey charger um, and also somewhere nice to eat there as well. And the second stop will be at this stop, which is a Fastned charger. And this is uh, next to the Angel of the North, which... I don't even know if I've ever been there, so it'd be nice to uh, go there just to see it. And the Fastnet network is a network from Holland, um, which is really impressive. And it's all over the Netherlands, um, but there's only two in the UK. So this is the first time I'll be able to have a look at that. Now, last time I did a trip from Surrey up to Glasgow, um, I was noticing on the Nissan Lee 30 kilowatt that the battery temperature did start to warm up as I was going. So it'll be interesting to see how this Nissan Leaf compares in terms of battery temperature. And I'll be doing some checks on Leaf Spy before I start and also before and after I do a rapid charge. And I'm hoping that I'm not going to hit any rapid gate. Um, by the time you watch this, I'll know whether or not I did. But uh, we'll see. And rapid gate was where there was slowing down of charging um, on second or third consecutive charges on the 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf. So we'll see if it affects it in a similar way on this one. Now, my plan is to do two stops, as I say, and each stop I'm planning to have a nice long break, um, bite to eat, stretch my legs, and I'm probably going to stop for about 50 minutes or so. So I'll get a very long charge while I have a nice break. I think if you're doing a long road trip, better to plan it in advance, take your time, and make sure that you stop and have a proper break on the trip. Break it up into as many stops as you need, um, to stay comfortable and stay fresh and uh, don't drive long distances and get tired so i'm going to be taking uh today um, just for the driving and i'll be doing uh, a drive back where again i'll be staying overnight and setting off fresh in the morning and i think that is the safest way if you're doing a long road trip to be honest so on this trip i'll be looking at the efficiency i'll see how many miles i'm getting per kilowatt we'll see how long it takes and we'll see how the battery temperature uh, changes during the trip and i'll stop and do a little update at each of the uh, rest points when i'm charging and uh, i'll update on how i'm getting on so i better get started and i'll see you at the first charger see you in a bit
right, I have arrived at my first stop on this Scotland road trip. I've done 160 miles and I've stopped at an Osprey charger, which is in uh, Newark. I arrived at 4%, which in this car on motorways, you're probably, that's probably about nine miles or so left. Now, obviously I've been driving EVs for eight years and you get a feeling for how much uh, uh, range you have left in your car and uh, you know where you'll feel happy to push it and where you're gonna err on the side of caution. And I had a quick look on PlugShare before I left, so I knew if there was any real problem with this charger, then there were plenty of others nearby. And as you can see here on PlugShare, there were lots of other options for other rapid chargers all within three to five miles away if there had been a problem. And in this new Nissan Leaf, I'm kind of still getting um, my feel of how to estimate the range um, that I've got left. So I'm probably going to plan to have roughly about 10 to 15 miles spare in the um, estimated range above the range I've got left in my trip. And if I notice that closing down a bit, again, I might slow down a wee bit. If I notice that that gap is increasing, I can feel free to be uh, more heavy on my right foot, shall we say. And we'll see how it goes over the course of this trip. Um, admittedly, this Scotland road trip is not as cold as the last one. The last one, it was going somewhere between naught to five degrees. At the moment, it's 12 degrees outside. It's really quite pleasant. Now, when I got here, um, Unfortunately, there was another um, car already charging. There was a Mazda MX-30 charging. Um, now, obviously, I knew I was going to a location with just one rapid charger, so that is a slight chance you take. Um, and as I said, I did have other charging options if I needed it. But uh, and the gentleman said they don't need another 15 minutes, so that was fine. I just waited for him to finish. And uh, we had a little chat about uh, the MX-30 and how he was finding it as his first EV. In terms of this location, as I say, there's one Osprey charger here, uh, and that is a 50 kilowatt uh, charger. And um, behind me, there is the Tawny Owl uh, Pub and Restaurant, and that's a nice location to get some food and drink and uh, uh, go to the toilet, etc. Um, unfortunately, I didn't plan ahead properly in that I didn't check the opening times and this is something I've done before I have to say on road trips um, this place actually opened at 12 p.m and I got here as I say about 11 30 so um, I thought I was going to be out of luck for getting some food however just across the road there is Code Fitness and I'll put a link here to them uh, that's a gym which was open and it had a nice little cafe in the front uh, and I got a nice salmon and dill cheese on toast and a very nice almond coffee, which I'm going to enjoy shortly. So uh, thank you very much to Code Fitness for uh, providing some refreshments on my trip. Cut to coffee. Oh, that's better. Got my caffeine shot. So the first part of my journey was 160 miles. And I think that is about the right distance, uh, maximum distance, really, that anyone should go um, without having a pause. Whether you're an electric car driver or an ice, petrol, diesel car driver, whatever, at least for 15 minutes, and if not, maybe a little bit longer. So the next stage of my journey is uh, slightly shorter. It's 147 miles, and that will be taking me to this charger in Gateshead. And some of you might recognize that this is the charger at the Angel of the North. Now, for those of you who may be outside of the UK who have never heard of the Angel of the North, um, here is a picture of it. Uh, it's a big statue up on the hills in the uh, Gateshead area. And uh, it's uh, something I don't think, I don't remember if I've ever seen it. I, I probably saw it many years ago. So yeah, I think it's another good reason to stop there and uh, take some uh, photos as well um, while I'm charging. So I'm gonna pause it there. I don't want my coffee getting cold. and. Uh, I'll uh, have another chat just as I finish charging before I leave. See you in a minute.
So that's it. I finished my first charge on this step of my Scotland trip. Um, I charged up to 81%, which on the GOM should give me an estimated range of 165 miles. Now, the next stage of my trip is 147 miles, and that should give me a reasonable uh, range of error. So thanks to Osprey Charging for a faultless charge, as always. And thanks to Code Fitness and the Marston's uh, Tawny Owl Pub uh, for my lunch break. Um, it did open uh, about uh, 20 minutes after I did that recording and I popped in for a second coffee and a very tasty blueberry muffin. So I am ready, pumped and ready for the next stage of my journey. And I'll see you all when I get to the Angel of the North. See you in a bit. Right, hi, I'm at my second and hopefully final stop on my Scotland road trip. But that last leg didn't go according to plan. Um, right, so where to start? Well, um, as I say, first off, I am trying to do this in two stops and I'm probably pushing it down to a low percentage. I'm used to driving EVs, I'm fine with that. Um, I think if you had bought this car and you were a new driver, you wouldn't give yourself any um, any tight spots at all. You'd probably, you would go about 120, 130 miles and then you'd charge up. Okay, so on the last one I did 160 miles, took it down to 4%. But as I say, I'm comfortable with that, but I wouldn't expect new drivers or people who just want to take things calmly to do that. Okay, so bearing that in mind, Second leg of the journey was 147 miles, as I said. I charged up to um, 81%, and the range uh, gasometer, or GOM as we call it, said 165 miles. So I thought, that's probably a reasonable margin of error. I was starting to trust the uh, GOM on this car, and I thought, well, that's another, what, 19 miles extra. I should still be fine. Okay, this trip has reaffirmed to me, never trust the GOM. At least don't trust it entirely to be accurate when it talks about range. Now, remember, the range estimate is just that. It's an estimate. It looks at your driving over the last, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, the speed you were going, the conditions, and it estimates if it was continued like that, how far the percentage you have left will take you. So it is a guess. So bear in mind, only the percentage is an absolute figure. So I thought, well, 19 miles, that's probably still enough, even allowing for that uh, degree of inaccuracy. However, so about half an hour into the trip on the second leg, doing about 70 miles per hour, the gap between uh, what the GOM said there was uh, left uh, in the battery and the 
distance I had still to travel started to narrow, 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 narrow until they were the same. Uh, and that's a bit tight. It doesn't give you any margin of error. So, okay. As I said before, if that, as it starts to narrow the gap, fine, you just adjust your driving style a bit. So I slowed down to about 60 miles an hour. And it kind of stayed about the same for about another half an hour. Uh, and then it slightly dipped under. So it was actually saying I had further to go than there was in the battery. And obviously it didn't like that. So unfortunately for about the last hour of the trip, I had to toddle along at about 50 miles an hour, which was not in my plan. And with that, I thought, yeah, it's okay. It crept up. The difference between what the estimate was came back up six miles above what I had left. So I thought, yeah, I got a bit of a margin of error. That's fine. So all being well, that should have been that. Uh, but, but I didn't count for the perfect storm of Google uh, not necessarily get me to the right address. The Google address, which I took um, from uh, PlugShare, I took the uh, Google address of the uh, Angel of the North charger, and it took me to here. Yeah. Does anybody see a charger here? Yeah, I'm. maybe it's behind those bushes. No, I don't think so. Okay. So... I got back in the car and at this point I was down to 2%, which yeah, with this car probably means about six miles or so, somewhere between three to six miles. Um, obviously I think when you get down really low, you are looking at small inaccuracies making a big difference. Um, and I took the postcode and I put it back into Apple Maps and made sure at the destination I could see Fast Ned on the map and uh, about 2.5 miles. Okay, still doable, but a little tighter than I liked. Um, maybe range nervous rather than uh, range anxious would be a better description because uh, the figures are still in my side. But I arrived here and I arrived here with 1% as you can see, and the range had gone blank. Um, so that meant I was down probably to the last couple of miles. Now, people who drive electric cars will know that once you get down to extremely low, usually uh, something called the turtle mode starts, and you see something like this on the dashboard, uh, and that's called turtle mode. It then restricts your speed to about 20 miles per hour, enough to get you about the last half a mile to limp to somewhere safe to stop. Now that never came up, so obviously I wasn't that close, but yeah, I didn't mean to cut it that fine. So anyway, it just shows you after eight years, you're never too late to learn. Um, and I am sitting here now at this charger. It's only a 50 kilowatt. Um, it's not 150 kilowatts. So I'm just charging at uh, about 41 kilowatts at the moment. But okay, so I'm on a charger. <laughs> I, I can't complain. Uh, I've just been for a little walk before uh, the sunset kicked in so I could have a quick glance at the Angel of the North. Um, in terms of this location, um, well, there's a brilliant uh, landmark here, but that's about it really. Again, like the last one, it is a bit isolated on the side of a dual carriageway. It's probably not somewhere you'd want to go late at night. I mean, it's uh, right next to it. There's a little wasteland and things. So, yeah, probably not a charge of for uh, 3 a.m. in the morning. Also, I've got to say there's not much in terms of facilities at this location. Um, there's nowhere to eat and uh, there's not really any toilets either. Uh, I mean... Okay, not to be too delicate, there's plenty of bushes, but yeah, this is not exactly a stop which I would say would be ideal if you want to stop for uh, uh, a bit of refreshment and so on. So I'm going to have to find somewhere nearby. There is um, the Angel of the North Inn, which is about eight minutes walk. So I'm going to have a quick look and see if the inn is open and uh, I'll have one more chat just before I leave.
Hi, right. I found the inn. Um, sorry about the poor light. Uh, it's obviously dark now. So I found the inn and they had a fabulous um, carvery there and I really filled up on a full Sunday lunch with all the trimmings and a nice cup of coffee. So yeah, I feel much better. I feel raring to go for the next stage of my journey, which is only just over 133 miles. So um, I've left the car on charge for the best, more than an hour actually. Um, but I did make sure I left um, a need to charge um, sticker in my window. So if anybody needed to contact me urgently to get a charge, if they're more urgent than me, then they could have sent me a message. Uh, I always do that. But uh, still, when I got back here, no one else is in the car park and no one is on the other charger. So that's uh, fine. So um, I was thinking about it while I had my lunch, um, how to best estimate the uh, percentage I might need on a long road trip. And I think uh, this has been a useful uh, road trip for getting to know my EV uh, when I take it on long distance trips. So what I've done is I think of the range I've got left, 133 miles, add 13 to that and divide by 170, which is obviously uh, the motorway range at about 100% charge. That gives me um, 84%. So that's where I've aimed to charge to. So I should be up to 84% at least now, and uh, I'm gonna head off on the road now. So the next stop will be at the Edinburgh Town Centre, and uh, yeah, hopefully no more drama. I think uh, I've had enough drama for this trip. <laughs> so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so that's it. That's the end of my second Scotland road trip. The whole trip, door to door, took me just over 12 hours. And that included about two and a half hours where I was either eating or charging or both. The road efficiency was between 3.1 to 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, which is a little lower than my old Nissan Leaf, but I think not too bad. Now, I'm pleased to note that the battery temperature only got up to a maximum of 41.4 degrees after the second charge. And that's way less than my 30 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf, which on my previous Scotland road trip got up to a scorching 53.3 degrees after the last charge. And that's despite the fact that on this road trip, the outside temperature was about 10 degrees higher than it was on my previous trip. Now, regarding the fact that on the uh, second uh, leg of the journey, I got a bit lost, um, I've looked into that and it turns out the reason was that the postcode 
um, had been entered in wrongly into PlugShare for that location. Um, it was a couple of digits out and that's why I got directed to the wrong place. So I have since amended that and uh, there shouldn't be a problem in the future. And I'd also like to make a couple of points about the last charging stop. Now, although I left it on the charger for 86 minutes, um, I don't think it was charging for the whole of that time. Now, firstly, let me reiterate that I did leave a note um, with my phone number on the windscreen so that anyone could contact me if they needed me to move. Um, and as well as having lunch, I had to make a few important uh, phone calls and uh, organize my hotel booking um, over the phone. So I actually spent longer than I expected on that stop for that reason, uh, not because I needed to charge. And um, when I finished doing that, I didn't realize how much time had gone. And I looked back and it had actually already stopped charging. So I don't know anyone who uses FastEd might be able to tell me, but I think maybe it may have um, stopped automatically after an hour. So I don't know how fast it was charging on the last um, charge for sure. Although it was definitely charging at 40 kilowatts when I started. And as I say, the temperature never actually got up high. So I don't think there would have been any reason for it to throttle back on the charge speed. So I succeeded in what I set out to do. I showed that you can do a 440 mile road trip in this EV uh, with just two charging stops. Now, that being said, I was pushing it to the limit and uh, that is not how I would recommend people would drive if they were just doing a normal drive. Um, as I said before, I would probably suggest you don't try to run it down to one to 4% and give yourself uh, no room for maneuver. Basically, that's analogous to driving on miles and miles in your petrol car when it's already past the empty sign. So I think if I was doing this as a sensible trip and I wasn't trying to uh, prove anything, I would probably take three, perhaps even four um, smaller stops. And I think by doing that, not only would you uh, not leave yourself uh, running very low, but also you probably wouldn't need to charge for as long because remember the car charges faster when it's low. So actually I wonder if your total charging speed would have been better had I taken more small stops rather than taking long one hour stops. So I think uh, next time I do a long trip, I'm gonna try to firstly um, see if I can charge at 100 kilowatt Chadmo fast chargers rather than the 50 kilowatt ones I used on this trip. And I would also look to space my journey out a little bit more and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's it for me today. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to also subscribe to my channel and to click on the notification bell to get new episodes as soon as I release them. Also, please don't forget to like this video and to share it on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn or whatever social media you use. It really does help out my channel a lot and I really do appreciate it. So that's it from me and from my co-pilot, Constantine. This is the Plug Seeker, signing out. Happy charging, everyone.